Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. Of course, we've reached the end of the week, so it is one and only last call. The original last call, the original YouTube FOC show. And we're going to give you our picks for comic books that are heading final run cutoff this coming Monday night, unless you're DC, September 14th, 2020. And we're getting into it right now with the first one. We are talking about that Walking Dead Deluxe number one. We're getting Walking Dead in color, aren't we? That's right. Yeah, Walking Dead, if you're not familiar, if you only know Walking Dead from the TV show, um, Walking Dead was and has been uh, always printed in black and white. So this is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to get a re-release on a monthly basis of the comic, so we can kind of like take that journey uh, all over again. Uh, a lot of people like myself, like I jumped into Walking Dead late, you know, the phenomenon had to catch me um, two, three years into the run right before the television show was about to debut. So I'm kind of excited to like start over and read it. And, you know, yeah, you can pick up trades uh, and trades are awesome. We love trades. I like the compendiums. Right, right. Um, you know, they're great. But this is kind of cool to give you that like original feel uh, of picking the book up. Off the, off the newsstand, reading an issue, waiting a month to read that next story. And the and the great part is now we're getting it for the first time in color. And you're going to get some cool variant covers out of it, right? There's like four or five regular priced variants available for this book. You're going to get a different artist's unique take on the, on the uh, issue. And we're, hey, we're getting another Walking Dead number one. Just about every Walking Dead number one reprint ends up above cover price. So even though I know like everyone sees this coming, um there's no shock to this i really wouldn't be surprised if one day this is a ten dollar book yeah i do believe they printed issue number one in color once before it was like a special edition but i do also agree i think it's great to see a bunch of walking dead covers that aren't wizard world i mean i think wizard world for a time like every freaking wizard world show had a walking dead number one variant but either way there's a great one it's an foc this coming monday night Here's a book I believe we talked about before on this show, but it's gotten pushed back, but it's hitting FOC again. And we're talking about that Star Wars Adventures number one. That's right. These all ages Star Wars stories have been red hot for IDW. Uh, brand new number one. Um, you're getting some awesome Francisco Franco Villa art. Uh, high ratio variants as well. Not just those one in tens, one in 25 and up. Uh, definitely one to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. And there's all, also some really cool exclusive variants. So if, if you haven't um, checked out any of the different covers available for this title, be sure to head to exclusivevariants.com where you can see a lot of the different stores that have offered various exclusives for this one. Uh, there's some amazing covers. Here's a book we pretty much have on this show every time a new issue comes out right now. We're talking about Thor number eight. Talking about Thor right now is one of those titles that's like mandatory. Um, but at the same point, it's really why this show exists because you're not going to be able to bank on getting extra copies of Thor when it hits uh, shelves. Uh, I almost said newsstands, but that's almost dating myself at this point. But you're not going to get those opportunities. Um, the book tends to sell fast. Word travels quickly whenever something happens. Uh, Donnie Cates is money at this point. So this is one of those books where if you're going to grab multiple copies, or even if you just want your reader copy, you're going to want to lock in those pre-orders uh, before that FLC date where, you know, you, your LCS or your online comic shop um, can get those orders in and, and guarantee you a copy. Here's a book we recently kind of talked about on the three down portion of our three up, three down about those young teen team books. But we've always talked about how we've championed champions. And yes, it sucks to see we're getting another reboot, but we're getting another champions number one. And I'm still on board for this story. That's right. Especially playing into the whole outlaw story. And, you know, it, it, you say it sucks that we're getting another reboot. Well, it's, uh, really, it sucks that the previous um run was canceled i'm glad we're getting a reboot because at least we're getting more champions i'm glad we're seeing these characters work together um 
these are some of the most beloved new characters in the Marvel Universe, um, and it, forming this team together. These stories have been fun. Uh, there definitely needs to be more of an investment long term there, where Marvel needs to maybe put a big artist, uh, a big writer on the series. I would love to see like them put one of their big guns on Champion and have it be something where we're going to go through a run that's going to last the way Donnie Cates has had or the way Al Ewing's had or the way Jonathan Hickman has had. Um, but we still haven't gotten to that point yet. But we know Champions is very, very important to everything Marvel's doing. These characters have been heavily involved in all of the Marvel marketing these days. So I think this is one that, title that you have to pay attention to. It may not pay dividends in the short term, but it definitely will in the long run. And whether this series is the one to go for or not, um, there's going to be a lot of value in reading this just again to see the character development and know where Marvel sees these characters playing out in the future. Yeah, I'm definitely pro on this. There's a couple of sweet variants for this as well. Pick the cover I like the best and get that one in as pre-order. We're getting a new number one from Valiant, right? We're getting Ratchet Bougie Savage. Actually, it's just Savage with Savage number one. That's right. Now, there's a long history of dinosaur hunting in the Valiant universe. Uh, Tarak, I'm looking at you. But Savage is a brand new take. Um, you're looking at a character. I believe it's who, pronounced Savage. <laughs> uh, a character who uh, debuted in his own mini series uh, just in the last few years, um, was really well received and is now kind of getting uh, his own title. Um, really a lot of, of a buzz within the Valiant universe for the original kind of like Savage mini series. Uh, so this is, this is exciting. Uh, we're getting Max BMS writing this one. Um, definitely one to pay attention to. If you're not a big Valiant reader, um, if you're a Conan fan, if you like any of the things that Marvel's been doing with Conan, um, I think this will kind of fit in. And it, and it looks like with this new series, you're going to kind of like that mix of that, uh, that Savage Land type character who has to like be in a modern world. So um, I, I definitely think this is a, a for, for people who are always looking, Valiant has something for everybody. So for, for, People who are into those types of stories, this could be a, a, a kind of a good step into the Valiant universe. It kind of reminds me of Tarzan mm -hmm. mixed with Conan, but yeah, Savage number one, <laughs> FOC. Then here we have a big one from DC. This one got a lot of buzz. We got Tom King writing this. Got a lot of buzz from the series itself. It got a lot of buzz also from a variant book that we've talked about previously on this channel. But Rorschach number one, it's here. It's hitting final order cutoff. I'm excited to jump on this one. Oh, yeah. This has it all. Reader, reader buzz for sure. Um, if you talk about Rorschach, I am on board for more Watchmen stories. Um, I think they've really raised the bar since those original before Watchmen miniseries. Things have been getting better. The, uh, the Doomsday Clock, the implementation to the DC Universe. So if we're going to bring in Watchmen stories, especially like a solo story, DC Black Label is the place for that, to be able to get into that. And furthermore, to grab a writer like Tom King, however you feel about him, the guy has shown that he can kind of delve into the issues of like mental health. Psychological. Yeah, psychological things. Better than most writers, um, he has a real voice um, in that department. And so when you look at a character like Rorschach, I mean, I, to me, it's like a match made in heaven. And plus, think about the way that he has elevated these like B-level characters. No disrespect to Rorschach, but you know, there's not an individual member of Watchmen outside of probably Dr. Manhattan who like has that kind of gravitas. So I think he's the perfect writer for this. That Jay Lee cover, while extremely different in and of itself, the controversy sells. So the controversy about surrounding that book, which again, we don't need to get into it. We've talked about it, but the controversy surrounding that book is certainly gonna get a lot of attention on that book. Um, I love this from all angles. I will be buying both covers. So there's our picks, but we also want to get into that indie showcase. That's right. This is the indie showcase portion of this video presented to you by Black Cape Comics. 
all the books we talk about on here as well as these books in the indie showcase are available to pre-order at blackcapecomics.com but the first one we want to talk about this week we've talked about this title plenty of times and we're going to keep talking about it hidden foc canto 2 hollowman issue number three hits final order cut off monday that's right and this is another series that just retailers cannot keep up with the demand for this one and, and so we've talked about the need for you to go ahead and, and if there's series that you love and then we know a lot of you are on board with canto make sure we do not underestimate these issues three and four because that's when like the order numbers heavily heavily drop off so in the indie showcase today presented by blackcapecomics.com we're going to talk about two titles um that are extremely popular and that are moving beyond issue number one and this is where people tend to the or, retailers drop off their order numbers by more than 50% going to issue two and then another 50% into issue three. And that's kind of industry standard. Your shot may be a little different, but that's what we see across the market. And what that means is putting in those FOC orders is ever more important. So blackcapecomics.com is a great place to get your FOC orders in and you can save some money um, offering a 15% discount on all FOC pre-orders. So Canto uh, number two, uh, number three, uh, so the second series, um, The Hollow Men, is definitely a prime example of that. Yeah, the next one we're talking about this indie showcase is the big Al Ewing book from Boom Studios, and that's We Only Find Them When They're Dead, number two. First issue's taken off like gangbusters. Great story. I'm sure number two is just going to add to that as well. That's right. I mean, you're talking about the series that broke all records for Boom Studios. Um, but that's the thing. Again, big numbers on issue one. We're going to see a drop off in issue number two. You're going to want to make sure you lock it in because we haven't even gotten into the meat and potatoes of the story that I really think is going to pop um, and make everybody going to go back and grab those back issues. We've seen that with something killing the children. We've seen that with Once in the Future. I think you're going to see that here with We Only Find Them When They're Dead. So definitely get those pre-orders in for We Only Find Them When They're Dead, number two. And while you're on blackcapecomics.com, you can also get ahead of the game and grab those back issues like Black Cape Comics' own exclusive for We Only Find Them When They're Dead, number one, available on their website for $24.99. So there you guys have it. Canto 2, number three, as well as We Only Find Them When They're Dead, number two, are the Indie Showcase books this week presented by Black Cape Comics, which leads us to the last portion of this show which we think is also, it might be last, but it's probably one of the most important, especially with how popular later printings are, but we have some additional printings that are hitting final order cutoff this week as well, right? That's right, and this has become one of the most important parts of this show. Uh, these books are absolutely on fire. So Immortal Hulk number 35 hitting a third printing, and we know that that second printing did very well. Web of Venom Wraith number one, a hot, one of the hottest books from this past week, hitting a second print. Venom 27, definitely a key issue there, hitting a third print. Fantastic Four Antithesis number one, hitting a second print. And we're going to talk a little Fantastic Four here, Brian. Fantastic Four number 24, hitting a second print. This was my favorite book of last week's FOC. We didn't have it on the show, but it was one of those books that picked up on late. That backup story, uh, written by Donny Cates, uh, with art by Greg Land, uh, telling the story of the that's within Fortnite of uh, Thor and Galactus that really plays into the current uh, Donny Keith store run. If, and that's a big if, they put that cover, that, that backup story cover, as the cover to this second print, watch out for this book. Which also brings to mind, if you are collecting those Fortnite Marvel variants, they have another round of those coming out this FOC as well. But there it is, guys. There's our picks for Final Order Cutoff. Let us know what good books you guys are picking up. This is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.